and hear some of our friends. So Bruce Lipton is a cellular biologist, and he came out with a new book called The Biology of Belief, Unleashing the Power of Consciousness, Matter, and Miracle. And he tells us that our cells are listening to our emotions in the form of chemical compounds, he already told you that, and that your DNA is changed, including their functions due to the signals they get from the cell membrane. And he's a lovely being. Here's our friend Dawson Church. He is a widely renowned author and editor and a pioneer of epigenetic medicine. Epigenetic means pre-genetic, the thing that causes the genes. Um, and he's telling us also that your thoughts determine your health and control the prevention of disease. Here is our another friend, Rick Hansen. He's a neuropsychologist, co-founder of the Wellspring Institute for Neuroscience and Contemplative Wisdom. And he told me something fascinating recently, that when you pull a thought out and you're thinking about something, and then you shift your attention to something else, that before that thought goes back into storage, it's vulnerable to change. Meaning that your memory is not a solid, concrete thing. It's sort of like when you take a document out in your computer, and you're looking at it and you make a few changes and then you go to close it and it stops and goes, save as? Do you want to save these changes? And you go, yeah, I do. Then your new changes go in and the next time you open up that document, that's what the memory says inside you. So you know this is true because you've all had experiences like Christmas, for example, or Burning Man, where you go one year and then the next year and the next year and they all kind of blend together. And then even the old family stories where you go, remember when I got that blue tricycle for Christmas and you wanted it and your sibling goes, no, that was my blue tricycle. And mom gave it to me and you wanted it. You both swear that it's your memory? Because somewhere the story of the fight over the blue tricycle got spoken about enough that you, you kind of edited the memory and it became, we both had the blue tricycle. When your mom could show you pictures that there was only one blue tricycle, and it was really not even either of yours, but your brother's. Okay? So that's how our memories are always editing. And it makes sense, doesn't it, that you would have an experience, and then your mind would say, this is what I know about it until I get more information. Uh, my friend stood me up for dinner, and the memory is, I'm waiting there by myself. And then the next day you get a phone call, oh, I had a flat tire and my car blew up and I'm fine, but that's why I didn't come. So instead of the memory of my friend doesn't love me, it was my friend had an accident and it's okay now and took me out the next day because, you know, they did love me. Cause, but your old memory, if you just left it there, is I'm alone and my friend doesn't love me. So your memory has to have an ability to update itself to stay current with new facts that come in. This includes things that happened to you a long time ago that were traumatic that you're still responding to because the energy is still circulating in your nervous system. And when you look in the mirror, you go, ugh. Because sometime in puberty, you looked in the mirror and went, ugh, to yourself. And you forgot to update the ugh to ugh. Okay? <laughs> so a lot of times we're walking around with a two-year-old version running behind the scene, or a 10-year-old version, or a 15-year-old version running our lives, and we wonder why, you know, we're 45 years old and we still act like we're 18 sometimes, throwing fits or melting down, or I can't, you know, going into that drama. It's because that memory is still playing in the background somewhere that someone told you that you were unacceptable or that you weren't good enough or that you weren't an A student or they didn't invite you to prom or whatever it was, or somebody abused you and you just try to put that behind you, but behind you is really behind you, like in your back, okay? So we're going to work some of these kinks out of the system, and the nice thing is, this process is, works the same for everything. <coughs> so if you wanna heal a chronic pain, you do the same thing. You wanna heal an illness, I've watched lupus get healed. I've watched cancer disappear. 
I watched chronic infections in the body disappear. I watched a staph infection in someone's arm dissolve in 90 minutes. And all we did was sit in my bedroom and work our meridian points and say a few words to each other. Okay? Yesterday, someone came to the conference and worked with me and dissolved two years of rape memories from a very young age. And she left going, I've been drugged over this, and I feel happier than I felt in a long time. I said, well, when's the last time you felt this good? And she said, when I was 11, before it started. I watched somebody else come up to my booth with tooth pain. Maura brought her up to me because Maura just told you about that finger experience she had. And this beautiful woman came up and said, oh my gosh, I can't open my mouth. My tooth hurts so bad. She was in tears. We stood across from my table and worked on meridian points and discussed her tooth pain. And it went from 10 excruciating pain down to three or two. And she was able to enjoy the rest of the conference. So I just want you to know that nothing that's wrong with you in your brain or in your body is permanent. That everything can be healed. And that you can do it yourself. And all you need to do is practice a little bit, loving yourself, forgiving yourself, and being brave enough to remember what was said or what happened or what you started to believe as a result of what was said or what happened. That's good news, huh? Mm -hmm. Let's see, what else do we have here? So that brings us to our dear friend, Gary Craig. He's a Stanford University engineer who studied thought field therapy, which is called TFT, he was, uh, which was developed by Roger Callahan in the 80s. Thought field therapy came around the same time that things like Touch for Health were coming out, where they realized that if you touch certain parts of your body um, in certain patterns, that stress and trauma would start to come out of the nervous system. They started to connect that your meridians actually were your electrical circuits. And that when you're in stress and pain and trauma, your body short circuits. In order to keep you from getting overwhelmed, overloaded, passing out, freaking out, killing something, or you know, blowing up, sort of like your house does. If you get a surge of energy in your house, you've got a circuit breaker to protect your house from catching on fire. So Gary Craig was a student of Roger Callahan's. <coughs> He wasn't a healer, but he was an engineer, and they're always looking for better ways to do things. So he decided that thought field therapy, which was very expensive to learn and took a long time because, as humans do, we tend to overcomplicate things, right? I remember when the birth control pill first came out, they were giving you like elephant doses of hormones when they, you really only needed this much. Yeah, it worked because it was so huge, but it also a teeny bit worked. Well, Gary Craig found out the same thing, that Roger was saying you had to learn these special um, points to touch in certain orders, and you had to muscle test and figure out well, where was the correction needed, and was the muscle test accurate, and we got to you know, undo and redo. And Gary Craig said, what if we just cleared all the meridians over and over? Wouldn't that work? And we could streamline it, and it would be so simple we could teach it to kids. And we wouldn't need to look it up in this book and figure out what the remedy is. So he tried it, and guess what? It worked. Which means that today I'm going to teach you the basic meridian tapping points, and you're going to stimulate them with your fingertips. And that's going to pulse heat, light, and sound through the electrical wiring of your body while you think about something that's bothering you, and you're going to feel that emotional charge decrease. The emotional charge decreases, it also means the belief system behind it is changing. Which then means you have an ability to install a new belief system because there's a neutral space for that now. And upgrade your nervous system. Which means your subconscious operating system is of being mumbly, grumbly, I'm not good enough, I'm too old, I'm too fat, I'm too ugly, I'm too whatever, American, I'm too in my head, I'm 
to ADD, whatever it is you tell yourself, that can be changed to, I'm okay. 